Hello cosplayers, today's tutorial will take you how to make your own DIY gemstones and geodes using some pretty common household objects. Let's get started. So the materials I've got here is everything that you'll need. The first item is the borax. And you can get this, um, it's about 4 or $5 in any of the big box stores in the laundry section. You'll need food coloring in a variety of colors, whatever color you want your crystals to be. Uh, neon works fine, so it's normal. Pipe cleaners, ideally the same background color as what your crystals should be, or as close as you can reasonably get. A spoon or something to mix with. A stick that you can lay across the top of your container when you're actually trying to grow the crystals. Scissors for your string. A container to do all of this mixing and crystal growing in. And string to suspend your pipe cleaners from such that your crystals can grow in a 3D shape. So, let's get started. We'll start with our string. It doesn't really matter what kind of string, twine works fine, I just use what I have on hand. Yarn should work too. You just want to take a small piece, cut a small piece of this off, and we'll save that bit for later. Then you get your pipe cleaners out. The pipe cleaners will create the base of the crystal that you'll actually grow the borax crystals on. So I'm starting by twisting two together. You can use however many you want. Uh, obviously, more pipe cleaners is larger. And I started twisting them together in a spiral. I was trying to go for a relatively flat crystal with a bit more of a raised edge, so I tend to spiral mine together, and occasionally I would weave one underneath the other just to make sure that they stayed together and wouldn't spring apart. So there's me weaving it under. Continuing this process, I think I added two more pipe cleaners throughout. And eventually you get to your final pipe cleaner forms. This is the last one I added. I wanted to add a little bit more bulk on the sides. Once you've got that, take the string you just cut and tie it through and around your pipe cleaners. You'll be using that string to suspend this in your solution that will actually grow the crystals from. So you want to make sure it's on there pretty tight. You're just going to cut this off later, so if you can make it inconspicuous, that's great. You then tie that string to your stick that's going to lay across the top of your container. I prefer to make the string pretty short so it's not hanging down at the bottom. You don't accidentally stick your crystals to the bottom of the container, or if you've got a shallow container so it doesn't hit the bottom. Trim the excess. Now let's get to making our solution. So I just filled a pyrus container filled with water and heated that up in the stove. What I'm adding right now is the borax. Um, I actually recommend adding it in terms of cups and not by teaspoons because I ended up using 30 or 40 teaspoons and eventually I ended up switching to a jar because I realized I needed more space to grow my crystals. So I've got some of the borax there already pouring my warm water up in there. You don't want it boiling because that's how you crack glass and you end up making a huge mess like I did when you break your first container. So get generally warm enough that it's steaming should be just fine. You, all you need to do is make sure you can dissolve the borax. So here I'm pouring in some of my wet scrap from my previous solution. You can keep reusing the solutions when you're doing this and make it a couple of times, which is really, really nice. So you can do crystals in similar colors if you save your solution every time that you do the growing. Now I stick my spoon in to stir it up, so help this speed up the dissolving process. And stir, stir, stir. You can see now at the bottom when I pointed that I've got some amount of borax still in the bottom despite how much I'm stirring in the warm water. That's what's called a saturated solution in chemistry, and this is what you need in order to grow those large crystals, otherwise you get really tiny ones. Now I'm pulling out the food coloring. I was trying to make blue crystals, so I used, I believe, 10 drops of the neon blue and 10 drops of the dark blue because I kind of wanted the middle blue in color, and I stir that back in. Once the dye is all nice and spread out, it's time to put your crystal form in. And we're good to go. I also covered mine such that the steam couldn't escape. That's up to you if you want to or not. A piece of plastic wrap works just fine. Move that off to the side so we're working cool. And you want to let it sit for somewhere around the span of 8 hours. And this is what your final crystal looks like when you're done. Um, the part I've added on the edge is to make it look like a thick geode, so if you're interested in doing a geode part, continue on to the next section. Alright, so if you're, whatever you're going to do, you want to seal your crystal because borax will re-dissolve in water if it gets wet. So I've used a resin spray that I just sprayed on top of my crystal. Mod Podge will work too, but I tend to find that it dulls the shine and makes the crystals a little more whitish in color. But anything will work. To make the outside of the geode, I ended up deciding on paper clay just because it's really light and I was making something that's relatively large, but you can use model magic or your own clay, whatever works, as long as it's air dried. 
So I'm just working it into strips, moving it around, trying to work it in between the natural gaps in the crystals. So if I had a part that jutted in a little bit, I'd stick some clay there, as if, you know, it was something that had actually broken out. And once I'd gotten that done and dried for two to three days, at least with the paper clay, your clay might vary on time, sanded it. What I'm adding right now is a light gray base coat. Use whatever color you want. I was trying to go for a river stone sort of look. So I just use something matte and light gray. Use a small brush to get in all those little details. I also painted in some darker lines, you know, for the smooth river stone look and tried to fill it in with something that had a little bit of glitter and shine from the outside. That's what you get. So that's how you make geodes and crystals and, you know, you can maybe use this for your adventure zone, add some stuff for your tourmaline. I, this is my stone of far speech and I hope you enjoyed. Happy cosplaying.